Hi all, welcome to another Dave Downey Fly Tying Video Production where I'll be tying all my favourite flies and patterns that catch fish around the world and not just in Scotland. Uh, all the flies that I'm tying I do use. This is one of my favourite flies. I hope you do enjoy it. And at the end of the video there'll be a wee list of materials just in case you missed it through the video of how you know what what materials to use and a link to my website where you can purchase the flies and you can purchase the materials. Now today I'm going to be tying a pink shrimp. Now Neil Sinkler, who has been Scottish Rivers champion, who's one of the best dry fly anglers that I've met, actually calls it the hideous pink shrimp because of the size of it. Now I've got a size 10 barbless grub hook, this is my own grub hook. What we're going to use is UTC 70 in white. Now you could use any colour you want, you could use orange if you wanted an orange head but the reason I'm using white is because it allows me the option to put a couple of little black dots on the end which gives me a set of eyes. I'm going to be using some Venryard's fine lead wire to, to lead the fly. In this one I'm going to put two layers on. I'm going to be using some Jackson 4 kilo nylon, 0.14 for the rib. For the shell back, what we're using is Cybia Pearl Braid Back. It's the UV light pink. Uh, really, really good. I'll show you it here. It's got a really nice, you can see, it's, you know, it is really, really nice and it's strong as hell as well. For the body, Cybia again. I really like the Cybia stuff. It's a fine spectra flash dubbing in pink. You can see it's got different, it's got UV through it, it's got pearl through it, it's got a few different colours through it, and it is really, really fine. So we'll get started with the fly. So we're going to run the thread on first. Now I'm not going to, I'm not going to super glue the, the lead on or varnish it or anything. I'm going to use the thread to, to give me a, a base so the lead will grip. Because if you don't, the, you know, the lead will just spin round. So as I said, we're going to be putting two layers, so we're going to start here, one, two. That's 27 tonnes of lead. But remember it's quite fine. So you could leave it like that and just do the one, but I like to do two. And this fly is good fished in a team of nymphs, usually in the middle dropper. So when you're doing two layers you, you stop early so you you know you don't go right up because you want to have actual shrimp shape to, to the fly. It's quite hard to say that actually. Right so that's us done with lead and as I was saying I also fish this under the indicator, dry dropper, tandem, duo, trio, clink and dink, whatever it's called in your part of the world. So I'm now going to tie in my, my, my rib. Catch that in and just tie it down. This is all I'm doing is try to cover the lead up as best as possible because I want a white underbody. So it's going to take a wee bit of time. We could use 140. That's UTC 70. I've always found my pink shrimps, believe it or not, work better with a white head and I remember fishing one of the times Neil, Neil Sinkler and Neil, Neil really loves the dry fly you know he sets himself a challenge every year on the local river to catch a grayling on a dry fly every month you know so and, and that's in the winter and he does it I think it's only one year he's not managed to do it but he, he done it this year as well so you know take my hat off to him, he's out there, we're all nymphing, catching grayling, 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 he's out there fishing away with his dry flies and his one weights. Uh, but yeah, but in Czech Republic we, we set ourselves a challenge and Neil would fish the pool first with a dry fly and then I would come through it with a, the pink shrimp and a pheasant tail and I, at that time I was basically Czech nymphing with it or French nymphing or Euro nymphing, whatever you want to call it. I'm just fixing that little bit of stray lead right so you can call it what you want uh, but he would fish a pool with a dry fly and honestly I was getting three times the amount of fish out of the pool with, with this shrimp so we'll go back up to the front don't worry about that bit of lead sticking out and we'll catch in the, the shell back 
So I'm going to run a thread back sparsely and then we'll crank it up a wee bit because obviously I want that wee bit of lead and stuff out of the way. And this is where you, you start building the shape back up to the body of the fly because obviously you've got that step between the two bits of lead. Right, and you're starting to get that shrimp shape. Oh, there we go again. It's a struggle to say that, to be quite honest. I'd hate to think what it would be like if I had false teeth. I might not be able to say it at all. Right, keep going. So we're getting that shape. Now we'll go back down. Now we're going to get our, dub our dubbing. As I've said to you before, I always cut a corner of the bag. So the bag's got a wee corner cut so that the dubbing's not going everywhere. And I can just pull out enough as I want as I'm going along. So, because we've put two layers of lead on it, we're going to need a fair wee bit of dubbing to, to cover the, the surface area. Because even though it's only a size 10, there will be a lot of uh, dubbing required because obviously the circumference of the body is going to be wider than one layer of lead. So we'll put that down now and we'll start working it. So as always I'm always using my left hand to manipulate, manoeuvre, guide the, the, the dubbing, whatever, whatever you think. Right, so there you go. It's looking great already. We need a bit more. And dub that in. I want to make sure I'm covering everything. It's trying to expand out, so just take the thread back a wee bit. Right, I don't really need any more dubbing, that's fine. Take the dubbing away. Yeah, we'll just do a few wraps at the head just to build it up a little bit. Right, and that, that's basically the fly dubbed. So we want to pull over the shell back. It doesn't stretch, which is good as well. Sometimes the stretchy ones when you're stretching them, they just snap on you. So this one doesn't stretch. So I'm just doing five or six wraps and I'm going to cut that away. Right. At this point I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit and then I'm going to do a whip finish. And then the, the thread actually snaps. There's another reason why I should maybe have used 140 rather than 70. Right, so if the thread snaps, just do what I've done there. Hold the two bits of thread together and go over the top and start again. Right, just tidy that up a little bit. Okay, and we'll just do a bit finish on it. Okay. Now what we want to do is rub the fly with a nylon and you can be quite strong with that because the nylon's quite strong. Obviously you can use whatever brand you feel like but I like because I, this is the stuff I fish with as well. Right? I don't like that, it's too close so I'm going to take it back off and go a wee bit further up and we'll do one more and that'll do. Then we'll catch it in. Two, three, four five and then back the way to so pull the nylon back and go over the top of it again that locks it in place then again always better to be safe but finish I think that just popped off there right back down and then Right, trim that off and then take that one away. That's it. So, what I'm going to do, I'll varnish the fly. Right, so I'll varnish the head of it and then I'll draw the eye on and then I'll re varnish it again. Because, if I, because of UTC thread, if I was to put a black eye on that, then it would just bleed. And it would end up, it would be, wouldn't look like an eye. So, 
I'll put a coat of clear varnish on first, so I'm actually putting the black marker pen on the clear varnish. So we'll just give it a coat. And it is quite a big head, but it's the right shape. It, you know, it's the shape of the fly. If you wanted it to be all pink, then you could just use pink thread. Shell pink thread for UTC would do the same job. Right, and I'll just leave that to dry off. Once that's dried off, then everything will be fine. So, I'll just show you the back. You can see it there. It's like a snake skin. And it's it's UV apparel. And it looks great. So, I really do hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope it's going to keep you guys entertained. And give you something to watch. And something to do while we're in troubling times. So, you can follow me on my Facebook, David C. Downey. You can get me on Instagram, uh, Dave Downey Fly Fishing, or you can go to my website, which is www.fly-fishingworld.com, which has got the flies, it's got the materials to tie the flies. Uh, there'll be a few blogs going up there as well at some point. So I really do hope you enjoyed that. Hope you're going to pass it on to your mates, get them to come and have a look, uh, see whether they want to stay or not. Uh, and, you know, thanks for watching, guys. You know, because uh, if you weren't watching then it wouldn't be worth doing it so thanks again, tight lines and hope you all get better and stay safe and you get out fishing at some point soon take care bye for now